In the last video, we looked at summing a sequence. The summation was called a series. A geometric series will converge if the modulus of a ratio is less than 1. That is, it will tend to a specific value or a limit. In this video, we're going to look at something called the sum to infinity. To begin with, I want to focus on an informal approach. What I've got here is a 500ml glass. I'm going to try and fill this by adding a certain amount of lemonade each day. On day one, I'm going to add 200ml. Every day afterwards, I'm going to add half what I did the day before. So on day two, 100ml. On day three, 50ml. Day four, 25ml, and so on and so forth. So the question is, will I be able to fill my 500ml glass? What we have here is a geometric series. The first term is 200, we've got the second term of 100, the third of 50, and then the fourth of 25, and this will continue. So first term 200, common ratio of 1 half. So am I going to be able to fill the 500 ml glass? This is a question we're going to come back to later in the video. We've seen in the previous video that the sum of n terms manually can be given as a plus ar plus ar squared plus dot 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 right up now to ar to the power of n minus 1. So when we're summing, we add the first to the second to the third right the way up to the nth term. We saw an easier way of doing this was using the formula. The sum of n terms was a multiplied by 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r where a was the first term, r was the ratio, and n was the number of terms that we had. What we're going to do in this video is look when n gets big, or tends to infinity. Let's take now our ratio just here. We've got now 1 half, so the modulus of the ratio is less than 1, as we can say now that the ratio is going to be 1 half. Let's look at powers of 1 half. 1 half to the power of 1 is going to be equal to 1 half. If we take 1 half to the power of 2, we get a smaller number, or now we decrease the size of the fraction. 1 over 2 to the power of 5 is going to be 1 over 32. So if we take 1 over 2 to the power of 10, this is going to give us 1 over 1024. So as this value of n tends to positive infinity, this is going to tend to zero. So let's see what we would have in this particular case. And one way you can do this is just consider it as one entire sum. Alternatively, you can split this fraction up. So you can say now that a over one minus r minus now a multiplied by r to the n over one minus r. So we can say now as n tends to infinity, that is, it gets very big, we can say now that r to the n will tend to zero. And we see my case right here. So if I went to the next part, it would be 2048, and as n is getting very big, this is going to tend to zero. So if r to the n is tending to zero, this fraction right here is going to tend to zero. So what we end up with now, this fraction right here, a multiplied by r to the power of n, over 1 minus r will tend to 0. So that leaves us now the following. We can write this as the sum to infinity will be equal to a over 1 minus r. And that is our formula. And that's a formula that's in a formula book and it's one that we can quote and use. So all we're doing is looking at it in this way. If you wanted to leave it in its previous form, the sum of n terms is going to give us now a and then we'll have 1 minus r to the n over now 1 minus r. So we can say as n tends to positive infinity, r to the n will now tend to 0. So we can say the sum to infinity will be a, will have 1 minus now 0, and that will be over 1 minus r. So that's two different ways. That's one way, and then we've got the other way to the left. So to find the sum to infinity, we simply now plug in a, the first term, and divide this by 1 minus the ratio. So let's go back to my example of the lemonade. Are we going to fill this? So let's collect some information. a 
R and N. I've looked at this in the last two videos. I think it's really important that we do this. So A is the first term, which is 200. The ratio is going to be one half, and N is now going to be infinity. So we're summing to infinity. So we can say now the sum to infinity, or the value that it'll tend to, will be 200, that's A, over 1 minus R, and R is 1 half. So we got 200 over 1 half, so we can say the sum to infinity will be equal now to 400. So we can see no matter how many more I put in, I'm going to hit this certain limit, and let's see if I can just put this on. I think 400 mil will probably be about, about there, uh, maybe a bit higher. So it's only ever going to get here. And that now is an example of the sum to infinity. So we can use and quote the result here that the sum is A over 1 minus R, where A is the first term and R is the common ratio. This only holds true when the modulus of the ratio now, and we can write it here, if the modulus of the ratio is strictly less than 1. Otherwise, we will have a series that will diverge. This now is a convergent series. So let's look at finding the sum to infinity of a geometric series. Let's take something nice and straightforward to begin with. We might, for example, have 1 minus 1 half, and then plus now, and we'll take 1 quarter, minus 1 eighth, and then plus dot, 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 and so on and so forth. So what we want to do is find the sum to infinity. So collecting the information, We've got A, R, and N. A is the first term, which is going to be 1. We want to find the ratio, and now we're taking N to positive infinity. So if I divide now minus 1 half by 1, I get minus 1 half. If I divide a quarter by a minus half, I get minus 1 half. If I divide minus 1 eighth by 1 quarter, I get now minus 1 half. So we can see now that this will work for the sum to infinity as the modulus of the ratio is going to be less than 1. It's minus 1 half. When we're talking about the modulus of the ratio, we're saying now that R will be between negative and positive 1, excluding both of these values. So let's go ahead and do this. We've got now the sum to infinity is going to be A, which is 1, over now 1 minus minus 1 half. So all we're going to do is 1 over 1 minus minus 1 half, which is going to give us now 1 over, and we're going to add this. So this is going to be 1 over 3 over 2, which is going to give us now 2 thirds. So we end up now with the series, or the sum to infinity now, being 2 thirds. We've just plugged that in. So there we go. There's a brief introduction to the sum to infinity. In later videos, we will look at work that involves particular sums to infinity, and then we will match those up and work between the sequences and the series.